rated G for Galileo. S C I R E B. Ahoy, European history nerd fighters! Today we'll be discussing the scientific revolution, and in particular, Galileo Galilei. So hold on to your telescopes, because we're going back in time. So who was Galileo, you might ask? Let's ask our viewers. Sir. Sir. Hi. Now, who was Galileo? On the spot. Who is it? What? Come on. I don't know. You don't know? Come on, man. He was like that science guy. What do you do? Okay. All right. Next person. Man, man, man. <laughs> hey. Who was Galileo? Who was Galileo? Now, we need a pop. Uh, Come on. Science person. Yeah, he was a science person. What do you do? Telescope. Yeah, that's right, man. Yeah. All right, there we go. Does anyone know who this man is? Let's ask Hutchbert. Hutchbert, yes. who was Galileo? Oh, he was one of my great nemesis. He is one of these guys that has a lot of numbers. Yes. Math guy. Oh. Bad, 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 bad math guy. Uh, did some things. I don't know. Um, stare at the stars a little bit. Mm -hmm. Ancient historian. But still, it's, it just gets back to the point where he did math. Yeah. Math. Bad. Bad, bad stuff, right? Bad, horror. I know. I'm doing it right now. Not good. Yeah, I agree, I agree. I think we should take this to Miss Pennington. Yes, me too. <laughs> the scientific revolution was not a short time period with thousands of people making new discoveries daily. Rather, it was an actually drawn out over many decades, involved few people, and was made up of multiple false theories and wrong conclusions. Nevertheless, the revolution did contribute to society in a positive way and helped to change the face of intellectual thinking forever. Galileo and Galilei changed the astronomy by looking at the heavens through a telescope and discovered that they too were imperfect like the Earth. Galileo's fascination with science began when he was a wee boy. His father, Fizenzo Galilei, was a mathematician and baby Galileo's earliest influence. Science experiments as wholesome baby... Marker. <laughs> Take two. And performed science experiments as wholesome father-son time. And this was the beginning of Galileo's chemistry with science. Another man that influenced Galileo was spectacle maker Hans Lippershey. Lippershey was the first to make crude telescopes with leftover lenses. After being denied a patent for his invention, Galileo was influenced to take his idea and perfect it. Lastly, the little known philosopher Aristotle influenced Galileo to prove him wrong. Aristotle theorized that earthly objects were imperfect and were meant to decay, while heavenly objects were perfect and eternal without change. Galileo disproved this theory after he observed the moon with a telescope and discovered that the surface was as imperfect as the Earth's. So what did Double G do that was so monumental? Five landings up in here. For starters, Galileo looked into a Dutch telescope, despite the Catholic rumor that the devil distorted the images, and saw things other people couldn't even fathom. Different stars, mountains on the moon, and most importantly, spots on the sun. These mysterious sunspots intrigued Galileo, compelling him to do more research on the sun. Being influenced by Copernicus, Galileo had Oops. always believed in a heliocentric universe, but after extensive research, he believed in the heliocentric universe with the support of evidence. This action by Galileo went against church doctrine belief because of a, of a geocentric universe. But Galileo put out his findings without fear of the Catholic Church because he can prove he was right thanks to his being an intellectual bad astrologist, a.k.a. the 17th century Tony Sparks. In 1610, Galileo left the University of Padua in Florence to be the philosopher and astronomer for the Grand Duke of Tuscany, who happened to double as Medici. After being comfortable in the court, he decided to present this theory to the, that the universe was subject to mathematic laws. This stung the country and impacted their previous thinking. This contributed to the scientific revolution by supporting the new idea that quality and religion are replacing the method of reasoning with quantity and mathematics. And now a moment with the Burton. So, Coach Burton, what did the church do to Galileo as punishment? Oh, man, it was freaking awesome, dude. They, like, put him at the stake, and they burned him, and stuff was going everywhere. I mean, it was one of those things where everything was on fire, and people were like, oh, bad, bad. That didn't even happen. And that's the way the moon rock crumbles. You can imagine that with all the new ideas that Galileo was spreading throughout mostly Italy, there would be some reactions, especially among the church. After this publishing of the starry messenger that spouted Galileo's Copernican ideal of the universe, um, many church persons rose up in protest, namely the Roman Catholic Church. While Galileo may have thought his theory was out of this world, the Roman Catholic Church revolved around the older geocentric teachings and, of course, their holy scripture. 
Essentially, Galileo was caught in the crossfire between religious teachings and science. The Roman Catholic Inquisition condemned Copernicanism and forbid Galileo from teaching it. Well, Galileo didn't exactly like that idea and published a second book on the Ptolemaic and Copernican systems that outright defended his Copernican beliefs and also made fun of the Pope. Galileo was put on trial, and I guess the Inquisition thought he needed some space because they put him under house arrest for the last nine years of his life. I mean, talk about being alienated. The reactions from society were mixed, mainly because the new ideas introduced totally obliterated the Aristotelian ideas that the people had learned. While some, mostly other scholars and cardinals, received his ideas warmly, others shunned them and even believed that Galileo's observations were results of illusions created in the telescope by the devil. The influence Galileo had upon science wasn't great outside of Italy, yet he did leave lasting influences. A world of quantities began to replace a world of qualities and aspects of the world could be increasingly described in mathematical terms. Regarding the church, his ideas caused much questioning on the state of the planets and even of the place of the heavens and God, and created more tension between the relationship of science and religion. He did influence one great man in particular, Sir Isaac Newton. His views about inertia and its application permeated Newton's thought, and he gave Newton ideas to gravity and motion that became the foundation for Newton's theories in physics. In short, Galileo was pretty awesome. So why was all this junk important, you might ask? Well, let me tell you. This scientific revolution that we've been discussing led to and directly caused some of the biggest discoveries in history as we know it. Take, for example, the little discovery known as the New World. If, we, if it weren't for the advancements in astronomy and navigation tools by scientists during the knowledge revolution of knowledge, we wouldn't even have half the world. Crazy, right? Also, it led to advancements in medical practice, advancements in engineering, and it would be argued that without this time in history, you might not even have your handy dandy smartphone. Ain't it crazy, right? The Enlightenment would have never happened, leaving use without great things like democratic government, great romanticism, and the bloody French Revolution. We owe so much of the modern life to these people who sat around and figured out these most basic things so that one day others could work off them and develop the new world we see it today. So next time you pick up this handy dandy smartphone, say thanks scientific revolution. You, you rock! rock!